Welcome to DX Adoku training video number 96. In this video, the puzzle solving technique called alternate inference chains, AICs, will be demonstrated. AICs are an extremely advanced puzzle solving technique. They are tough to learn and they require practice before you can get good at finding them. And the process of searching for them can be a bit tedious and time consuming. So it's important as you watch this video that you have the correct mindset. This tutorial is long because I include lots of information, so please be patient as you view it. And because there is so much information, it may be helpful to watch this video a second time. Here is a list of prerequisite videos for this video. Consider the following Sudoku in progress. When searching for AICs, we search through all the numbers 1 through 9. All the cells having a possible 1 candidate are now highlighted. For the possible 1 candidates, we find a naked swordfish pattern. Whenever we encounter a naked fish pattern, we move on to the next number. This is because with a naked fish, there will not be any candidates to remove from the puzzle. Naked fish patterns include X-wings, swordfish, and jellyfish. All the cells having a possible two candidate are now highlighted. Next, we identify all the possible two candidates participating in an either-or link relationship. In this example, we find four sets of either-or links. Next, we list out all the bivalue cells having a possible two candidate. In this example, we have four bivalue cells having a possible two candidate. Our next step is to combine the two lists into one list of potential starting and ending cells with no cells repeating twice in the list. Between the either or links and the bivalue cells, we have seven unique cells in this example for the possible two candidate. These seven cells will be used as starting and ending cells when we begin searching for a complete AIC chaining sequence. Not all AIC chaining sequences are going to bear fruit. Many times our chaining sequence will stall and we will have to move to the next search attempt. Since searching for AICs can be a long and time consuming process, we want to reduce the amount of work we will do to a minimum. With seven cells, with one starting and one ending, we will end up with 21 different combinations. To keep our chaining sequence work to a minimum, our next step is to only choose starting and ending cells, having candidates to kill in their kill zones between them. Consider cell 1,2 and cell 1,3 as starting and ending cells. There is no kill zone between these two because they are in an either or link relationship with each other. This pair can be excluded from our list of potential AIC chaining sequences. Next, we consider cell 1,2 with cell 1,5. The kill zone is highlighted in red and is defined by all cells sharing a house with the starting cell and the ending cell. Since there are no target candidates to kill in the kill zone, this pair can be excluded from our list of potential AIC chaining sequences. Next, we consider cell 1,2 with cell 9,4. This time, we find a candidate we could kill if we had a successful AIC chaining sequence. So we add this pair of starting and ending cells to our notes of which pairs to actually search for an AIC chaining sequence. Next, we consider cell 1,2 with cell 9,2. This time, we find two candidates we could kill if we had a successful AIC chaining sequence. We add this pair of starting and ending cells to our list of ones to try. Next, we consider cell 1,2 with cell 7,3. And again, we find two candidates to kill in the kill zone. We add this pair of starting and ending cells to our list of ones to try. So at this point, you should have a good idea of what we are trying to do. We are building a list from the 21 combinations, identifying which pairs actually have target candidates to kill in their kill zones. So far, I've checked six out of the 21 combinations. I'm going to go off camera to check the rest. I'll be right back. I'm back. 
After searching through all 21 combinations, we find nine starting ending cell pairs having candidates to kill in their kill zones for the possible two candidate at this time. It is important to point out all AIC chaining sequences must begin and end with a strong link. This is the reason why we have chosen these sets of cells for our potential starting and ending cells when searching for a successful AIC chaining sequence. At this point, we are now ready to begin searching for our successful AIC chaining sequence. We begin searching with using cell 1,2 as the starting cell. There are three possible ending cells we can use for completing our AIC chaining sequence such that we have candidates to kill. Rather than doing a depth-first search or DFS-like algorithm for building out our chaining sequence, and in order to save time, we will be doing a breadth-first search or BFS-like algorithm for building out our chaining sequence. What this means is, every time we add a weak link to our chaining sequence, a new set of strong links are added to the next round of building out our chaining sequence. And every time we add a strong link to our chaining sequence, a set of weak links are added to the next round of building out our chaining sequence. We begin our chaining sequence by adding our first node, which is cell 1, 2 not equal to 2. We use a candidate background color of dark purple to indicate we are pretending this candidate is off or not set as the value of the cell. Next, we add all the necessary links for the next round of the chaining sequence. We add one strong link with cell 1, 3 set to a value of 2. We use a candidate background color of dark green to indicate we are pretending this candidate is on or is set as the value of the cell. As stated, every AIC chaining sequence must begin with a strong link. We add all the necessary weak links to the next round of the chaining sequence. These weak links come into existence because we just highlighted the 2 candidate in cell 1, 3 in dark green indicating it is on. Because of the 2 in cell 1, 3 is on, there can be only one cell having a value of 2 in the house making up column 3. We add all the necessary strong links to the next round of the chaining sequence. We add a strong link with the 3 candidate in cell 7, 3. This is because the 2 in cell 7, 3 is off, and there has to be at least one candidate on in cell 7, 3. We add the next round of weak links to the chaining sequence as shown. These weak links come into existence because of the 3 in cell 7, 3 and there can only be one three in the house making up row seven, and there can only be one three in the house making up column three. At this point, our chaining sequence stalls. None of our remaining weak links has a strong link to continue the chaining sequence. We update our algorithm notes to include what to do when our chaining sequence stalls, and that is we move to the next cell to use as a starting node in our chaining sequence. We are now using the 2 candidate in cell 1, 3 as our starting point in the chaining sequence. For this cell, based on the pairing work we did, we have three target ending cells which will result in target candidates being killed. But remember, for us to have a successful AIC chaining sequence, we must land on one of the ending cells with a strong link to the starting candidate, which in this case is the number 2. We add the first round of the chaining sequence to our notes. We are assuming cell 1, 3 does not have a value of 2. And we add the second round of the chaining sequence, which is a strong link to the 2 candidate in cell 1, 2. We add the next round of weak links. All these weak links are added because we are pretending the 2 in cell 1, 2 is on. We begin the next round of the chaining sequence, which will be a round of strong links. We concentrate on the first cell in the previous round, which is cell 1, 2. Since the 4 in cell 1, 2 is off, we highlight all the cells having a possible 4 candidate 
so we can look for any strong links. We check the row, we check the column, and we check the block, but we do not find any strong links. Next, we check the 7 in cell 1, 2, since it is off. We highlight all the cells having a possible 7 candidate, so we can look for any strong links. We check the row, we check the column, and we check the block, but we do not find any strong links. The 8 in cell 1, 2 is also off. We highlight all the cells having a possible 8 candidate, so we can look for any strong links. We look in the row and we find a strong link with cell 1, 2 and cell 1, 6 with the possible 8 candidate. We update our notes. We look in the column and we find a strong link with cell 8, 2 and we update our notes. Next we look in the 3 by 3 block and we find a strong link with cell 2, 1 and we update our notes. We look at the 2 in cell 4, 2. We highlight all the cells having a possible 2 candidate. We do not find any strong links with the 2 in cell 4, 2. 4, 2. We look at the 2 in cell 6, 2, and we do not find any strong links. We look at the two candidates on row 9, and we find a strong link. We add the next round of weak links. All these weak links are added because of the strong links we added in the previous round. We add the next round of strong links. But now we have a problem. At this point in the chaining sequence, cell 5, 5 has two candidates colored in green. This violates the Sudoku rule of having only one number on in a cell at any one time. So this is a contradiction of our assumption. We have a valid puzzle where each number occurs once and only once in each of the 27 houses. At this point, since our chaining sequence resulted in a contradiction, we must conclude our original premise, cell 1, 3 is not equal to 2, is false. In other words, cell 1, 3 must have a value of 2 in it, otherwise a contradiction will occur in the puzzle. Here is the isolated chaining sequence from starting cell to the contradiction cell 5, 5. We update our algorithm notes for what to do when a contradiction occurs in our chaining sequence. There are four different types of contradictions that can occur when building out our AIC chaining sequence. The first type is when two numbers in the same cell are both on, as in this example. The second type is when all the candidates of a cell are colored purple, indicating they are all off. This is a contradiction because every cell in our puzzle must have at least one value set. The third type is two of the same number within the same house are both colored green, indicating they are both on. This is a contradiction because it violates the only one of each number per house rule. The fourth type is when all the candidates for the same number within the same house are all colored purple or off. This is a contradiction because it violates there must be at least one of each number on or green in each house. At this point, since we have a contradiction, we choose the value 2 for cell 1, 3 as shown. In the next demonstration, an improved AIC search algorithm will be used. Now that you have an understanding of the basics, here's an improved version of the AIC search algorithm we will be using in this second demonstration. I've updated the first bullet point of the algorithm, changing the order we search on candidates. Rather than searching through the candidates 1 through 9, we are going to search the candidates having the most number of bivalue cells plus the number of either or links first. This is because when we have a large count of starting and ending cells, there's a greater chance our AIC chaining sequence will be successful. All the cells having a possible 1 candidate are now highlighted. We find four bivalue cells and five either or links for a total of nine. All the cells having a possible two candidate are now highlighted. We find five bivalue cells and five either or links for a total of 10. All the cells having a possible three candidate are now highlighted. Okay, you get the idea. I'll be right back. I'm back. All the cells having a possible nine candidate are now highlighted. We find four bivalue cells and seven either or links for a total of 11.
we determine that the nine candidate is our best choice to begin looking for an AIC chaining sequence. We identify all the cells having a possible nine candidate participating in an either or link relationship. We list out all the by value cells having a possible nine candidate. We combine the two lists, making sure cells only occur once. The V2 algorithm is different on this step. Several steps have been consolidated to save time. For cell 1, 1, all the pairings having target candidates have been determined. However, for cell 1, 1, our chaining sequence stalls. Next, we consider cell 1, 4 as the starting cell. For cell 1, 4, here are all the cell pairings having target candidates. We begin our chaining sequence with a pair of strong links. We add the next round of weak links. We add the next round of strong links. We add the next round of weak links. We add the next round of strong links. We add the next round of weak links. We add the next round of strong links. We add the next round of weak links. We add the next round of strong links. Every time we have a strong link to the same number as our original chaining candidate, we check to see if the cell is one of our chosen ending cells. In this case, we have found a match. You might be thinking, why waste time determining which starting and ending pair of cells have target candidates to kill, when you could just check every time you land on a strong link to the original chaining candidate. The reason is many times you would be creating chaining sequences with no results. This is because the starting candidate does not have any pairing cells with target candidates to kill. Using the information from our BFS search and the BFS chaining sequence, we can map out an isolated chaining sequence from starting cell to ending cell. Here is the isolated chaining sequence from starting cell to ending cell. The kill zone is highlighted in red and the target candidates to kill are highlighted in a darker red. Before we kill the target candidates, let's consider the logic for how the AIC puzzle solving technique works. First, let's consider what happens when cell 1, 4 has a value of 9. This results in all the target candidates in our kill zone being killed. Next, let's consider what happens when cell 1, 4 does not have a value of 9. When cell 1, 4 does not have a value of 9, then the chaining sequence kicks in, and we end up with cell 9, 5 being set to a value of 9 as shown. This again results in our target candidates in our kill zone being killed. So in both cases, our target candidates in our kill zone are being killed. So we must conclude the target candidates are non-possible candidates, which can be removed from the puzzle. We remove the non-possible candidates from the puzzle. Now, before you go off searching for AICs in the wild, I can't emphasize enough the importance of doing practice exercises first. You can use Hadoku's learning mode to generate practice exercises for finding AICs. From Hadoku's Mode drop-down menu, select the Learning Mode menu item. This pulls up the Choose Technique dialog box. Select Nice Loop slash AIC as shown and click OK to exit the dialog box. Then click on Hadoku's Generate New Puzzle button. At this point in the puzzle, the next step in solving the puzzle will be finding an AIC. At any time, you can use the hint button to see the answer. It may take a few tries before you are able to successfully find an AIC. Finding AICs is a skill that requires a little practice before you get good at it. With Hadoku's learning mode, you can generate one practice exercise after another until you've mastered finding AICs. Please support DX Hadoku by becoming a subscriber, upvoting this video, or making a donation to my PayPal account. Thank you for your support. This completes DX Hadoku training video number 96. Thank you for watching.